Has Microsoft b broken their promises? <clears throat> Have they also decided to go multi-platform? <gasps> Who knows? Find out next week. Um, Good evening. <laughs> Goodbye. And talk to you next week. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Gamers to Podcast. Your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video game industry and anything else that might pique our interests. You see all the Formula One in shambles. In in more shambles? Well, yeah. Have I, I, mean, have I missed sh being shambolic? Uh, there's the Christian Horner thing. Was that last week as well? Uh, that was like I think they came out either on the weekend or right before we had recorded. Where there was, there was there was I saw the league story or the I guess the story of it happening, but then like it was the first one, and then I just didn't see really any other talk after it. I don't know. We'll see. And then all the uh. Liveries are, well, not all. I don't know if all of them are out, but a lot of them are out, and they all entail black because they can, that's just not painting. Save weight, no paint. Yeah, I mean, they, they all entail that, but even the, uh, <laughs> uh, I, the word. There's one of them that just looks, I can't remember whose it is now. It's just so black with like a hint of green and that's it. Uh, I think that's uh, Alpha's, steak. I think, yeah, yeah. Alpha's new steak thing. Yeah, and it's just like, I don't know. I don't even know what any of the team names are anymore. I can't even pronounce the one. I'm just, VB, I'm just, Cash App, 99 yeah. RB, whatever. Yeah. Fucking mad and play names out here for cars. We're going. I'm going back to all the old names. So steak is uh, Sauber. Oh, Jesus. Going back to Sauber. All right, Toro Rosso. And then, uh, yep, Toro Rosso. Um, Renault made its way back to the, yep, Renault. To the, to the line. We're just going to go all original. I'm bringing Lotus back then. Yeah, why not? I think technically I have overlap now at this point by saying that. <clears throat> yeah, because it was Lotus then Renault? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, well, whatever. I'm going to bring back Marlboro Marlboro on the side of cars. That'd be a good one. Um, I could go. You know what I'd like? It's a classic. I can't, they, they brought it back for one race last year. It's the Martini Racing livery. Oh. Or yeah. just Martini Racing sponsorship. In I want to I wanna see. I mean, they do. Every team usually does like a Miami Vice type of thing during Miami. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a little bit more neon or the, a lot of the guys' helmets will have some flavor. I want to see a car go full vice San Andreas or just a full vice GTA. Like just full like Vice City. All just Vice City references. <laughs> no one's that car. cool. No, nobody. None of them are that cool. They wish they were that cool. Speaking, exactly. Speaking of cool things. Yeah, new games are cool. Yeah. Specifically, some of these. Number one, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink for PC and PlayStation. Number two, Persona 3 Reload for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number three, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice I read some of these. No, I didn't. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. I think it was in preview or or not preview, but um early access. Yeah, it was. Or pre order access amount, whatever. Number four, Foam Stars for PlayStation. And number five, Hell Divers 2 for PC and PS5. I own it on PC. Nice. Have you played it yet? No. I downloaded it tonight. Nice. So jump on that. What's it what's the price on that one? Forty. Forty? That's not bad. Forty bucks. Okay. There's a Bonus edition that costs sixty total. Is it worth it? I don't know. Okay, I bought it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I was like sixty bucks. That's the cost of a normal game anyway. You got them, or technically ten dollars cheaper. I wonder if it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, it includes all the year one DLC or something. 
I don't know if it had that, but it included like skins, guns, like maybe like a vehicle thing, like yeah. a rank. I think something along the lines of I could like go read the list, but well, that's cool. I'll look at it at some point. Um, yeah. Should we just jump on it? This week's news situation might be a little scatterbrained. Uh, it I mean, was if... Go on. it was hurriedly assembled. I also don't think really there's that much to talk about. There's not. There's just like a lot of like rumors and hearsay and like, let's find out next week. Yeah. I mean, like we can just say a lot of things. It's what, yeah. I, it's what I specialize in. Yeah. Yeah. Just talk out of my butthole. Yeah. Yeah. You feel All right. Like... We need you to burn 10 minutes. Yeah. You got it. In the age before man, there were high elves. <laughs> Phenomena. La, 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 la. <laughs> it's just me, just me making references, oh. references to nothing that anybody's going to understand <laughs> as I just go on into a skit to appease myself. Oh. I mean, I guess I could do the Putin method where first, I was going to bring that first. Up. We need to talk about <laughs> we could start with the history of Russia. So the Big Bang happened, and mm. we got to start there for you. The to really Big understand. Bang happened, and four Russia million, was born four million years ago. Dinosaurs were here, and Putin showed up. I rode Beat them. them up. I rode them. I tamed them. I rode T Rexes. Okay. <laughs> it's just like whatever, man. Um, Wild. Yeah. I don't know his timeline anymore. I I don't want to know. Um, odds or evens? Evens. All right. I got number one. CD Projekt Red announced a slew of appointments for its leadership team in Boston, which is working on Project Orion. There's a first off. I'm yeah. learning new things in the first sentence. Yeah. They have a leadership team in Boston? Yeah, it's a uh, It's a studio. It's called something. I can't believe I didn't put it in here. It's one of their studios that they bought. Gotcha. It's which I don't remember which one it was called. Anyways, Project Orion is the code name for CD Projekt Red's anticipated follow-up to Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, it was first announced last year, in case you forgot, which you know we probably all did. Uh, and now on to the new hires. We have Dan Hernberg joining as an executive producer. Hernberg last served as head of production at Amazon Games. The company also appointed Ryan Barnard as its new design director. Barnard's career includes working at IO Interactive as gameplay director. Alan Villani has been named engineering director of the studio. Before this new role, he worked as vice president of technology at WB Games or on WB Game Projects. Narrative director uh, Anna McGill. Joined CD Projekt Red as lead writer on Project Orion. Her credits include Control, Great Game, Avatar, Frontier of Pandora, Pandora, and Guild Wars Two. My problem wasn't with the writing. With uh, Avatar? No, with Guild Wars Two. Oh, with Guild Wars Two. Yeah. Control, Great Game. Avatar, I don't know. Guild Wars Two. My problem was how you chose skills. Yeah, that's a little infuriated me. It's a little bit of a writing was really fine, honestly. Uh, Alexander Freed also joins the team's uh, the game's firm to work on the narrative of the next title or the new title. Freed brings career experience such as working at Bioware as lead writer for six years. But what six years? What, that they don't say. Which that, is that is telling. Like, that is very. I need to know what six years. Yeah, that six year window. You could either be really great or oh no. What six years, Alexander? You say 2014 to 2020, oh. we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I should probably look up what this studio is called. Might uh, as well. Um, I'm curious, I guess, to see kind of how long this is going to, how long this is going to take. What's that? The game? Yeah. Because it seems like, that, I mean, they're ramping up pretty good. You got a solid pedigree of people. I think they're going to, still maybe shoot themselves in the foot though uh yeah because um 
I don't. It's Unreal Engine five for so that's you know that's good. But what, I guess when when I say shoot themselves in the foot is like they overpromise so hard on Cyberpunk one, it twenty seventy seven, um, with the whole like everything like you say they basically walked into the no man's sky problem like you watched a, a game director turn 75 years older in this course of two years uh but one of the biggest things was them saying multiplayer and then saying it's going to come in a later patch and then canning the entire thing all together and they're doing it again this time going you know what maybe we will put multiplayer in cyberpunk 2077 sequel and you're like you know, every time I read that, I just go, Why? stop. Stop talking. You need to just get this to be correct. Yeah. Um, I <clears throat> was sure that this was a studio they purchased. Um, but now I'm not sure if it was a studio they purchased and renamed or if it's just a new st- a studio they created. But they're just calling it CD Projekt Red North America. All right. Nailed so it. I don't know. Time to go to Boston. Yeah. We'll go ask them. Yeah, we'll just show up and be like, yo. I heard you have two jobs as. Uh, as two locations. Boston and Vancouver. Ooh, I'm not sure which one I want on which side of the country. Or other country. <clears throat> as, as Vancouver is technically in Canada. Yep. And by technically, I mean in every sense of the way Vancouver is in Canada. Boston. Technically, legally. Boston is closer. That's true. So we'll just show up. Mm -hmm. I'll say, do you have a COO position open? They'll say no. I'll be like, there's absolutely no way you've ever hired a chief opinion officer. (laughs) Please hire me. And they'll be like, oh, that COO. Okay. Yeah. And be like. Trust me, I'm worth it. <laughs> You'll never have a game release wrong as long as I'm here. I am the forums before the forums. I know what they will hang you for. Yeah. I will prevent that. I would have went with the CCO, Chief Creative Officer. Mm-hmm. No, see, that's legitimate. Uh, Can't you do know, that. Okay, too legit. Yeah, too legit, too legit. to quit. <laughs> <laughs> too legit to quit. So fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see in five years. I'm sure something. You think how long? How long? Four years? Five years? 2077 was 2020. Yeah. It's Unreal Engine 5. It's Unreal 5, which we've been having out for a while now. Um. From right now, there's no way it could be five, ten years between games at this point. If they're just, if they're here's just my issue. starting, but they're just they, starting and it's a new studio. But if they're taking over, like if they were handed and okay. then continuing, maybe it wouldn't be too bad. Um, Twenty seven. Trailers 28 release. So still four years, but not five. I think it's going to be longer than... I think it's going to be at least five. Revisit this. Somebody. Document it. Because... Run it back. The next... They have a game and that's going to... They have a Witcher game they're working on. They have more than one. Yeah. They're remaking one. But there's one that they're like, you know, neck deep in, I think, right Right, but not this studio. I know. So I'm thinking, I can't imagine they're going to like do, I think they'll want to give their games a little breathing room. Well, I don't think they're Ubisoft 3 EA. Yeah. I think they want to <laughs> give their games like a couple year breathing room. I don't know if they want to do that. Well, I don't think weird. Witcher 1 will get a couple year breathing room. If it's the remake, no, I don't think it will. I think the new Fox game or whatever will probably have a year, maybe two. Mm-hmm. But I see that one potentially taking longer to come out than this. Really? Potentially. Okay. If you say that next year has been 10 years since Witcher 3. You know what's interesting is, so 
Cyberpunk 2077 was not made on Unreal Engine. Right. It was made in theirs. So they essentially have to recreate everything over again. Potentially, unless yeah. they have some weird porting. Like, like if Unreal can translate it to an extent yeah. or something. Huh. We'll see. I'm sure we'll find out more in the future. Oh, God. Hopefully. Number two, Take Two has argued that virtual currencies are fictions in its appeal to get a lawsuit dismissed. As GameFile reported, the firm argued that the virtual currency does not belong to the player in the first place. Take Two's lawyers said VC is not plaintiff property. Instead, in game VC are fictions created by game publishers subject to the publisher's terms of service and user agreements. Plaintiff's claims to property ownership of VC within the games, as well as his suggestions that the defendants have an obligation to refund unredeemed VC or enable the transfer of VC from one of defendants' games to another, are merely conclusory and wholly invented, end quote. I hate lawyers. The lawyer added that the plaintiff didn't identify, quote, any contract, law, term of sale, use, or any instrument, end quote, supporting the argument that they own the virtual currency sold by Take-Two. The motion to dismiss also pointed to Take-Two's license agreement, which states that the company has the rights to manage, regulate, control, modify, suspend, and or eliminate its virtual currency as it sees fit, unless prohibited by applicable law. A hearing regarding the motion to dismiss will take place on March 14th, 2024. Does that type of, like, does this not make your blood boil? (laughs) So there's two problems. Yes, I'm boiling. And also, part of me goes, I'm not surprised. No. Like, my blood is boiling because it's it's the uh, bad faith arguments and yeah. everything. Like, okay, so really you guys are just dicks. Yep. It's Furthermore. The, it's the morality of it for me, but then, like, it's there's like, There's a whole moral thing. To be expected. To be expected as well. But it's a whole moral thing to the point where, obviously, I would never be on this jury because I'd be biased. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, fine. If that's how you want to operate, then you can no longer sell currency. Yeah. End of discussion. You can sell your game, and then as you're telling me, company, it is a license to your game. They've bought a license. Why are you telling me now that when they spend more money on your game, they're buying licenses to the virtual? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we'll see you later. You now need to disable microtransactions. Sorry. I had a random. I, uh, I saw that whole thing happen. Tangential thought. Was, I was like, did I forget to add that in? <laughs> uh, it depends on which thing you're talking about. That's cool. Uh, we'll figure it out. So that's my immediate thing. One, not surprised. Two, really fucking annoyed. Three, uh, that's why I don't buy stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely things I've, I've microtransactioned. There's 100% games I've spent money in. But at the same time, for the most part, I've burned all of it yeah that it's not just sitting around and also i don't do it you you only have it usually yeah generally it's very rare that i buy the the currency yeah i might just buy an item which or if you're buying the currency it's to buy something it's to immediately turn around and like okay i can't just directly buy that item but it costs a thousand things but I can only buy 900 of those things in one purchase because that's predatory so then i have to buy that plus the smaller one which is weirdly slightly cheaper than if I bought the one that's at 1300 which is just too much. And it therefore means now I still have an uneven amount because you won't let me do one-to-one transactions. Fuck, I hate microtransactions. Yep. Again, wouldn't mind it so much if it was just straight-up dollar, am- dollar amounts. If you just removed the currency, we'd be done. I want to buy that thing. You tell me it costs $10. I give you $10. Thank you very much. That's as simple as it should be to open up a business in this country. <laughs> Nobody's going to get that reference. Uh, oh, you have an apple? I would like to buy those apples. Here you go. Thank you. That's as simple as it should be. 
Oh, Ron. Ron Swanson. Whatever. Someday we'll get. No, we won't. I say, what are you? What are you talking? We're about? not going to get any sort of about? consumer fair regulation on this stuff. It's just going to be like ah. Consumer friendly is a myth. Yes. It is a myth and a lie that you tell yourself to feel better about the evil cor- corporation you support. That's true. That's true, and I don't need you to remind me of that, sir. <laughs> Hey, hey, this is just me telling myself in the mirror and painting my clown face on every yeah. time I go talk to Blizzard and Microsoft. <laughs> yep. Same. Yeah, I, no, I can justify playing, paying a WoW subscription. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking painting my face. <laughs> uh, you don't own anything anymore. You only rent it. Um, all right, number three. The Federal Trade Commission has claimed that Microsoft contradicted its intentions during its acquisition of Activision Blizzard when it laid off 1,900 employees from its game division in January. FTC lawyer Imad Abiyad argued in a letter filed with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit that Microsoft said it intended its acquisition of Activision Blizzard to, quote, operate as a limited integration studio, end quote. He also cited comments made by Xbox head Phil Spencer that the decision to lay off staff was made to eliminate, quote, areas of overlap, quote, between the two companies. Abiyad said, quote, this is inconsistent with Microsoft's suggestion to this court that the two companies will operate independently post-merger, end quote. Microsoft has responded to the FTC, stating in a letter that Activision Blizzard was already planning to make mass layoffs regardless of whether the acquisition was completed. In a statement to VGC, a Microsoft spokesperson added, quote, In continuing its opposition to the deal, the FTC ignores the reality that the deal itself has substantially changed. End quote. I don't know. I, More. Yeah, I, I, the, I'm pretty sure this is just... FTC is getting to be real old man yells at clouds. About everything. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those situations where, like, they needed to shit or get off the pot, and they didn't. Yeah, they just kept dragging their ass. Yeah. And, and then, I don't know if you've ever seen a dog drag their ass on the carpet, but nobody likes that. Yeah, it's not, you know. It's, it makes more of a mess. Gross. It's gross. I so, wanted to lay on that carpet, and you yeah. ruined that. Pink eye, everyone gets pink eye, worms, you know, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> Getting real dark. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think anyone who thought there wouldn't be mass layoffs as soon as there was a merger concluded. As if is, every time there's a merger, there's not some type of layoffs. Yeah, is is deluding themselves. So, I don't know. There's also, it just doesn't like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. They're getting the mass layoffs, and then next year there'll be mass hiring, and we'll continue the cycle. Yeah. I'd also love for the FTC to kind of, well, fuck off, frankly, but uh, just picture them kind of sitting <laughs> sitting in court being a, a man of the people, right? Hey, uh, they lied to you, and you should break them back up. Oh, okay. No, you agree with me? Oh, that's what, perfect, yeah. Hey, fuck you guys. You guys are all separated now. Now, uh, hire back those ni- those 1,900 people. What do you mean that's not how this works? Oh, you're going to just let go of more people now. Oh. <laughs> like what, man? It doesn't make any sense. It's like, a, it's like a heartstring play. Yeah. But it doesn't fix anything. You're, yep. <laughs> you're just going to say, hey, we want to separate you guys and make you weaker. And guess what you do when you do that? Make both companies want to let go of more people because the bottom line just changed again. Yep. I don't know. Everything's fucked up. It's all fucked up. So what if I gave you instead, Matt, $1.5 billion? I would take it. I would buy a lot of cool shit. Same. 
But unfortunately, that's not us getting that money. The Walt Disney Company has invested $1.5 billion to acquire an equity stake in Epic Games and has announced plans for a major collaboration with Fortnite. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney is the controlling shareholder of Epic and, quote, will continue to maintain control of the board following the close of this transaction, end quote, according to Epic. Disney and Epic describe the project as an open, persistent social universe. It will be a games experience, but also offer the ability for fans to watch, shop, and engage with content, characters, and stories from across Disney's portfolio, including Pixar, Star Wars, Marvel, and Avatar brands, end quote. I, I don't know what this is. I got a couple ideas. Okay. One, Fortnite's been the only ones that have actually pulled off a metaverse. Yep. So here's this. I so badly want to see Goofy do the gritty after he murders somebody in Fortnite <laughs> because that would just be peak 2024. 20, like kiss level of yeah. dystopian weird vibes. Um, We're straight up seeing- in like Ready Player One now. Seeing as they're like almost starting to use Fortnite as an engine, mm-hmm. with all the experience stuff and the Lego thing and the Rocket League and all that, I can easily see Disney using that in partnership with them to port in some of like the stuff they've been doing with those other Disney, like the theme park versions of yeah. games that they've done. That other Disney one that everybody was all over for Disney Island or something. Yeah, so it's like moving that in. Disney has that card game now. That I can't remember what the name of that is, but it's super popular. Like, I say super popular. It's Disney, so of yeah. course it's popular. But like, I it's think, a mobile I game, th- right? No, it's a it's a trading card game. Oh, I don't know this one. I think some card boxes were going for like three hundred and stuff. Like, I mean, there might be a mobile version of the same game, but what the uh, I think that, I think it's a physical one called like something with a C. I don't remember what the name of it is. But I could see them making something like that and that, you know, some type of that. I could see them just doing like weird experiences where it's like, well, here's Small World because we don't know what the fuck else to do with it. Um, cool, here's Star Wars and stuff. We've already had some crossover with having Mando and Fortnite and yada yada. Uh, the funny thing is Disney going, basically pulling the Eric Andre meme of, we should get into games, then shooting, ga- then shooting Lucas. And then partnering with Epic. <laughs> it's fucking wild to me. Um, <clears throat> In some ways, obviously having Lucas gone sucks. I miss me some Empire of War. Can we make Empire of War in Fortnite? That'd Come be on. pretty cool. Let's do something with Empire of War. That, <laughs> I'm popping up. Well, I keep preaching it until it comes <laughs> back. Uh, there's that, but the... Uh, them not have like Lucas not existing kind of his eh, initially it hurt Star Wars games mainly yeah but we are we are getting a new indie that looks pretty good and 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 truthful truthful to the material mm-hmm. uh, the problem with the Star Wars ones where it was Battlefront and Battlefront Two were the only two things we got until Jedi Survivor yep and then Jedi Survivor is still kind of like. Eh, you know it's good, but it's not. It's not Battlefront Two or Commando yeah. or yeah. So it's no, it'll uh, be very interesting. What it's no Jedi Academy or Knights of the Old Republic or or the MMO. Yeah. The other MMO. Well, galaxies or that one. <laughs> the Old Republic and Galaxies. Yeah, Old Republic was still good. Still is yeah. good. Yeah, still I, kicking. They've done visual updates. Yeah, they've done. I guess did they've I, done a bunch I show, of updates. Did I send you? I think I maybe sent it to you or showed you here. They did shader updates on it. No, I didn't. I don't and they're like, you that. can have like glossy fucking armor. Wow. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening over there? Are you guys doing something? Are you guys? Hey, hey, I have a Star Wars character. Can I raid? <laughs> I want to play. <laughs> can I play with you guys? Me, me fully knowing I cannot commit to two MMOs at the same time. My brain <laughs> fucking breaks. It's hard enough playing 13 characters and 30 yeah, I mean, some odd specs. Listen, it, it's, not our, it's not everyone else's fault that you have a problem. It it literally is a hysterical problem because like uh, between Buck and myself, who's who's my like cohort now in, in, in WoW gaming, 
of we will just jump around and play things. Yeah. And he he purposely picks the stupidest shit to play. Like the like the known worst spec. He's like, I'm gonna play it. And then he becomes a savant at it mm-hmm. up to like the certain level and you're like, I don't understand what you're doing. He's like, I have no idea either, man. Mm-hmm. And then we switch to just two completely <laughs> random other characters. Like, what do you mean you have everything already seventy and basically geared to go do this stuff? What's wrong with you? And we're like I don't do anything else. <laughs> I suffer. I don't have a life. You don't understand. <laughs> Help me. Yeah. <laughs> Get me out of here. Um, my concern is that Disney is going to put all their eggs in one basket and we're not going to get the possibility of other games outside of the epic universe. I don't think that's going to be true. Part, partially, yes, that could that could one hundred percent become true. Yeah, and it also depends on their success of doing this to begin with. But I think they've seen enough success with how stuff like Jedi Survivor has been received recently. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, okay, that doesn't really fit in this universe. We're we're here to get the kids. That sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> I mean, that's a hundred percent Disney, though. One hundred percent, we're here to get the kids. The best. I've ever heard Disney summed up. <laughs> and I do think they've actually potentially had a genuine problem. Like I with, think I think Disney's aging out. Like, I think they are too, yeah. I, and I think this is 100% a play to recapture the children. Yeah. We got to bring, them, we gotta bring them home. We had the yeah, had, had the exact same conversation at work when the the day they announced it. And I'm like they're 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 trying to get the kids. They need the kids. <laughs> <laughs> there is somewhere there is just a picture of us <laughs> standing like Charlie and <laughs> In the fucking Always Sunny episode with just a bunch of red lines going from a bunch of news clip- <laughs> clippings in Walt Disney's face with that fucking, kids. that fucking mouse next to him and a bunch of windowless vans and Fortnite and children. Uh, oh my god. I, I survive on the souls of the innocent. <laughs> I need more kids, Walt. Uh, oh. oh boy. Fucking Walt. Walt's like, we need more kids. We gotta resurrect Hitler. (laughs) (laughs) What's another famous Walt quote? I hate the Jews. (laughs) You know how how he just dropped those lines all the time. Uh, Fucking Walt Disney, man. um, You think his body's actually on ice? Probably. Or at least his head. Do you think they put him like a Futurama jar? Probably. Do you think he's hidden in one of the rides? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I think he's underneath the fucking Disney castle. What if he's just powering the Disney castle? He probably is. He's probably, he's, he's, he's he's my, probably feeding off he's my, the little kid energy. Oh, he's one of those. Yeah. Joy is what powers him. No, you know what powers him? is all the little kid piss. <laughs> Jesus and I'm, he's, starting, I'm he's, starting to wonder all if the toilets in Disney are hooked are up to his body him. <laughs> and he's like we need more kid piss I wonder if he's just like one of the the four seaters <laughs> like the council of nine or whatever yeah it's the council of nine sounds right it's close enough it's council of something the, you know the main reason I know them you were there with me in you the could... days before Guys, guys, we told him all the fuck off. No, we were. It was in the. We were in one of our older public phases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we were, we were. We had both of our max characters, and we were starting to do the extra stuff that, like the patches that they had added. Yep. And we were in that one. I can't remember what the the planet was, but we were there, and the entire storyline was. There was like one a- of them had died, and in order to maintain balance, you needed to take the seat on the throne. Yeah, yeah. Or not the seat on the throne, but the seat in the circle of them. Yeah. The seat on the throne was the Emperor of Zakul, yeah. and you do become the Emperor, and then you lead an entire fleet against... It was wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> that game is nuts when you really think about the power creep you had as a player. I know, you can't really rip on uh, WoW after the power creep and... Oh, no, no. See, I can rip on the wow power creep because the wow power creep is weirder. The wow power creep was every enemy you fight is bigger than the last one and has a bigger galaxy-ending plan than the previous one, 
while somehow the guy at the inn doesn't know your name. Mm-hmm. And you've been present, stopping the world for 20 years. Yeah, you're the dude oh, in the shadows. You, you remember the, I'm, I'm a giant <laughs> fucking walking chicken. You don't <laughs> miss me. <laughs> uh, Listen, if they like made the dude AI and he started talking to you about like your life. Detroit become human fucking you'd loading re- screen. You'd really get freaked the fuck out. If you had Chloe from the loading screen. <laughs> yeah. No, if, if I Where had... they're like, oops, I accidentally deleted your character. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I I wish they did have like obviously they call you champion or hero or whatever. They just kinda they cover all their bases. Yeah. I don't need them to call me anything. I just wish there was and it's in some of the text, right? And there's other there were some quests in this is completely irrelevant to this entire one point five billion dollar acquisition conversation. Um, That's fine. We've But there were some quests in Dragonflight and stuff where they were like I recognize you. You were there at the fall of blah blah blah. Or you know, they they referenced back like X amount of years and ask you like what was it like at the end of blah blah. You know, yada yada, or how was, you know, you you staved off the Legion. How wild was that and stuff? And like, so there's just some like random quest ones where you just kind of pick like options and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. But like, you're going to tell me that these people don't almost acknowledge me as a god? I've killed gods. Maybe. I've been, you, oh, something went wrong. You didn't call me to fix the light bulb in your house. You called me because a dragon. Or someone else nuked your city and said, "Can you go take care of that?" That's what you asked me to do. I don't know, this, man. I, I would, this would be like nine eleven happening, and you going. And you know what? This is probably a movie. Actually, this is one hundred percent a movie somewhere. Nine eleven happening, and you going to the one dude in a shack in the woods, and going. I need you to write this wrong. And then only him, the Homelander, uh, what, Patriot Boy, whatever the fuck his name was, Jason Ackles' character, um, just them going over mm-hmm. and doing whatever they're going to do. Just a one-man army. And you're like, you don't remember when I... You've never you've never heard of the Legion. Never. You don't giant, remember the time. Giant demons, there are green portals everywhere. Every time that like a the Aurora Borealis happens and it looks like a light beam coming down, every wild player goes, ha ha ha. Legion's invading, better go get ready. Maybe there's like a thing that happens where just everyone's memory gets wiped. Just men in black show up <laughs> every time after an expansion and <laughs> got everyone. Done. Honestly, the I, I would love to see the idea of Men in Black in a while. That would be fucking funny. That's the quest if you idea. Just, if you just like finished a campaign, like towards the end of the expansion, like in this last silly season that we're going to get for uh, season four going in, they're just like walking around. You just every now and, now and then, like you you leave like the auction house and you just see one spawn next to you, look at the auctioneer and go, <laughs> like all the major, like a lot of the major characters will always still remember you. But all like the little peasants and stuff. Yeah, you're talking to the innkeeper. The mo- you just you see your character start to walk away, and you just see a flash like just off your screen, and then Men in Black just fades out, and he's like, "That'd be great if they did that." But it's like it's Men in Black, so they wear the tux or they wear the suits, but like their race is like random every time. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it would it would literally just be the Bronze Dragon Flight who managed the timeways. Yeah. Constantly popping in and out behind you, going like, "Nope, you don't remember this. You don't remember this. We got to make sure this person does not remember this." <laughs> and they're just dressed up in a black suit, well, clearly either being a full dragon <laughs> or <laughs> just other things, just being like, "Nope, nope, nothing to see here. Nope, 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 nope." <laughs> gotta uh, make sure this looks right. Doing like a, wild. I would love to see a like a flash moment or Quicksilver even from the X Men movie mm. where they're. They do it. You <laughs> end of the end of the expansion. You're doing like a slow like walk through the town, and they're just blitzing around you with the light like speed trails behind them, rearranging everybody because it has to be exactly perfect in this time way to like make it right. 
Like, nope, this this person, nope, you're turned a little bit this way, okay? And your character is just, like, doing that slow RP walk towards, like, the <laughs> portal to leave. Mm. And they're, like, they're, they're essentially just, like, cleaning everything up behind you. Like, nothing <laughs> happened here. Everything's fine now. They all hate you because you always make a giant mess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time we come in there and kill a god, it's like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. Man, that looks pretty dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and they're like, all right, we're we're gonna be doing some overtime this week. And what did you think happened when you tipped his plate over? That's not how the story was supposed to go. I had to go back in and put that all back before he realized it. <sighs> all right. I cast forgive yourself. And <laughs> that's it. Okay. I don't think I can do that. What, his voice? Yeah. I don't know. The forgive yourself I can get kind of close to because it's just like a, a dulcet whatever. Yeah. But to to yell in that, that level, dick explosion, I don't know. Dick explosion. Yeah, it's hard. It can't really sound like a... I mean, technically, I think he might. he's clearly on like some type of filter too, but yeah. he is just shouting it. All right, number five. Woohoo! Microsoft. It's reportedly considering making some of its biggest first-party exclusives available on multiple platforms. According to The Verge, the game's firm is weighing up which of its first-party titles titles will remain exclusive to Xbox, as well as those that could become available on PS5 and Nintendo Switch. (laughs) Bethesda's Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, unveiled last month, is chief among the games being considered. Starfield has been hinted at, as another possibility to X, uh, to buy Xbox era, <clears throat> with a source suggesting that Bethesda's title could launch on PlayStation 5 following the release of the upcoming Shattered Space expansion. High Five Rush, High Fi Rush may also be headed to PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch following the discovery of data mined assets shared on X by The Verge's Tom Warren. Xbox boss Phil Spencer announced that a business update is planned for next week. Quote, we're listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. End quote. A lot of, uh, we're just going to kind of wait and see. Yeah, there's some, when we get to the room roundup next, there's some people that comment on, on the on it i think um i think a lot of it i mean it it gets covered in the rumor roundup but the general gist of it is that it seems like it's a lot of rumors that got out of control so yeah i think it's a lot of rumors that got out of control and as they kept coming out there's that part of me that goes microsoft told 10 different people 10 different things and wanted to see who the rat is yeah (laughs) i kind of just feel that way they're just like, right, one well, of you is going to talk. <laughs> I'm going to find out. And then Phil Spencer's like, all right, uh, they're all fucking rats. <laughs> uh, the good news about the business update, we've laid off another 2,000 people for fucking outing us. <laughs> for being a bunch of narcs. You narcs. Uh, but at the same time, I am curious uh, if they do anything. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think there's certain things like Indiana Jones and stuff that I can clearly see going around. I don't know that I can see Halo leaving. Forza? No. Like, there's a couple that I don't know. Like, Gears? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's kind of like, they'll have to do um, a few, like, they'll do a couple and see how it goes. But I do think that they would 100% try to move Game Pass. To other either, services? Either, whatever oh, yeah, allow 100%. Them. If, if either of those allow them, could you then be, there's a funny line that you could try to swing, right? Sony has allowed us to put Game Pass on, on PlayStation. So we're not necessarily putting Halo on PlayStation. But you can play it on PlayStation. Just like winking as hard as they can at people where it's like, you can't go to the PlayStation store and get it, but you can play it on there. <laughs> so it doesn't really count. Fuck you. <laughs> it's uh, like, Jesus Christ, you guys are petty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm in wait and see a mode as well. It's just too. There's too many wild things going around, and it's too. It's too wild. There's also a thing going around that apparently they changed. Maybe it was the stuff on Game Pass or something. 
they changed it from saying Xbox Series and whatever to now say console, PC, or cloud for the availability. And people were just like, oh, does that mean that they're just going to know they're just saying console? And it's like, no, that's what they should have literally been saying from the beginning anyway. Yeah. Why? Why? Because that's that's directly understandable for anybody. Yeah. Anyway, you guess what the time it is? Rumor roundup. Some industry insiders are now backpedaling on the rumors of Xbox exclusives going multi-platform. So great conversation, you guys. Got him. Nate the Hate, which is my nickname. Who's put out accurate info in the past? You're damn right. Is saying he now believes Starfield will remain exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem, and the rumors specifically related to that game were pur- pure fiction, possibly put out there by bad actors or bad rats. Rats. The next generation Xbox is releasing in two different SKUs. The most expensive SKU will be a traditional game console, like the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X, while the cheapest SKU will be a dockable handheld in the vein of the Nintendo Switch, created by the Surface team with built in controls and a touchscreen supporting cloud gaming that is capable of running Xbox games natively. And Nate, me, wants the third one, where you make a Chromecast for Xbox. I don't hate this idea, but. I don't either. I'm just curious what uh, Surface Team can do. Some things okay, but I don't know how they actually handle a gaming system. Yeah, so that's what I'm curious about. Hmm. I guess at this point it doesn't matter because like I feel like it's easier now than it than it would would be in the past. Yeah, Assess- easier to get it right or get it. There's close well now there's 100 percent proof of concepts and other people doing it, so you yeah. can kind of go what's worked, what doesn't work. Yeah, let me copy your homework. Yeah, I'm just gonna take that and uh, make it not look exactly like yours. Assassin's Creed Red is supposed to be out before April 2025. I should preface this as I stuck all the Ubisoft news in the rumor roundup because fuck Ubisoft. <laughs> Even I, if it's factual, I don't care. Also, I like that they're like, it's supposed to be out before April 2025. And I'm like, I fucking would hope so. You've been working on it for 10 years. At the same time, if that's the next mainline run. It better be 2025, not before. Because if you do another, if you do another yearly one, if you do Mirage and then you put one out this year, Ubisoft Eve, we gonna have problems. But in well, French, <clears throat> it will problema. That's it not could French. be, it could be twenty twenty five, or it could be twenty twenty six. Because he also said, and it's not in here, but he said they're watching to see when GTA six comes out. So I'm assuming they're like oh because that's for yeah because the 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 decision that everyone was gonna make that year was man I got one game to play should I play the new Assassin's Creed or should I play GTA Six? Well, I picked it up as if it <laughs> we want to be well clear oh, yeah, of yeah. GTA Six. No, so. I mean I believe that, but you know what's gonna be in the number one, the number top, the number top, the number the <laughs> basically <laughs> the top ten selling game for the next ten years after it launches. Yeah, GTA Six. Yeah. Ubisoft co-founder and CEO Yves Guimont has defended the $70 game price for Skull and Bones, calling it a quadruple A game, while us on this podcast wouldn't spit on it. Quadruple A. Eve, you haven't made a triple A game in I don't know how long. Come on, man. Ubisoft and co-founder Yves Guimont. <laughs> yep. Notice, notice him? Ever heard of him? It's called Assassin's Creed Nexus VR sales. Disappointing. And stated that the publisher will not be investing too heavily on VR for now, because that was not a quadruple A game. <laughs> <laughs> Sony is planning to make the PlayStation Six the most powerful console of its generation. AMD is the only vendor Sony is considering, according to Red Gaming Tech. The console's release window is said to be 2028, which is in line with the Xbox rumors from before. And of course, there. What? Just to be clear. If Sony came out and said we're aiming to make it the second most powerful console of its generation, what the fuck are you going to do with that information? Of course you're aiming to make it the most powerful. <laughs> what the fuck? I I had that thought when I was adding this in here, and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to put it in anyway. <laughs> it's, it's literally the fucking financial calls yeah. where they go, it's year over year, console sales are up, and you're like, yeah, you, you release a new one. Of course it's up. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> you think you're just like irritating me <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> unknown worlds entertainment has shared a public statement to clarify the subnautica 2 bullet points mentioned by crafton 
Early access is not intended for release in 2024, but we plan to share a lot more information later this year. In reference to games as a service, we simply plan to continually update the game for many years to come, just like the previous two Subnautica games. Think our early access update model? Expanded. No season passes, no battle passes, no subscription. The game is not multiplayer focused. Co-op will be an entirely optional way to play the game. You'll still be able to play it as a single player. All good clarifications. (laughs) <laughs> until Crafton's like we own you you do what we say some people are thinking Nintendo will reveal the Switch 2 before GDC in March I think you are ballsy to think that alright there you go as reported by Tom Henderson on Insider Gaming this year's entry in Call of Duty Call of Duty Black Ops Call 4 or as we all know Cod Blobs <laughs> Cobblots <laughs> uh, will feature an open world campaign in the vein of Far Cry built from the ground up Voss, known to be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, on one hand, all right, glass half full. It sounds great. <laughs> sounds like a really good idea. I'm Put, in. On, I might putting, actually putting Voss in the game. Is that what you're <laughs> well, uh, well, that too. Oh. But them, uh, them doing a Call of Duty Far Cry. Well, so they're. See, I think this is what, one of those. I, well, hold, situ- on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. We got, we got two different things. Mm-hmm. They've their last most recent Modern Warfare. They did do like a more open world mission style. Okay, like you still got put into the mission, but it was very large maps mm-hmm. compared to a little more narrow. Yeah, but if you told me that they just did a Far Cry with Call of Duty's gun physics and like shooting and things, yeah, no, nah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, glass half empty. Because I've heard conflicting things. I've heard that they're just doing, like, the co-op missions open world like previous Call of Duties have done. Oh, okay. So. Um, Glass unsure. <laughs> Voss is in the game asking you if you knew the definition of insanity. And then Die Outward starts playing. And then you have sex on top of a mountain and get stabbed in the chest. If you choose that ending. Because who chose to save their friends? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sex. Also, no one remembers Diane Twerp starts playing. <laughs> I do. Absolutely <laughs> nobody. <laughs> do you, uh, know, you know the definition of insanity? Uh, Tencent is reportedly working on Elden Ring Mobile, inspired by Genshin Impact, which means we like microtransactions. How about you? Give us a billion dollars. More. More. Grand Theft Auto 6 looks to be released after March 2025 based on publisher Take-Two's latest earnings guidance, which also makes sense because we got a trailer and now we're going to go radio silent for a year minimum. Yep. And then we're just going to drop it on you drop it and on you're going to give us multiple billions of dollars. Oh, did you know that uh, we're going to release this game to be $100 instead of 70 Because you'll buy it. You fuck you're it. still going to buy it. <laughs> You fucking idiots. Yeah. You're so stupid. Give me I would, money. and I am stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Take my piss. Oh, it makes me so angry. Which part? The piss or? No, that, I, <laughs> <laughs> that, that I probably would still buy it. Um, I'd still buy it, and I would probably say thank you. Yeah. There's still that moment where you, like, you do the transaction, and you go, you know what? Thanks for making this. I'm happy. I'm happy I get to spend. I'm happy to give you $100 for this game. You know what? I'd give you 110 if you asked for it. <laughs> and I'm just staring at you going are you an idiot <laughs> you could have just actually bought it from the guy over there the, at GameStop counter and not me in the fucking park outside and it would have been 70 <laughs> just a guy and you'd be like wait where am I there's, yeah, there's just a guy with a rock star logo on a hat and a clearly tan trench coat <laughs> who he has clearly used to sell watches in the park but it's just full now of PS5 and Series X fucking copies of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> what are you? What are you buying? <laughs> what are you buying? Which what team are you, are you on? Blue or green? Which you? You gotta stake your claim. You want some? You want some heroin while you're at it? <laughs> I'll, I'll take fifty percent off if you blow me. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta uh, stop. We gotta fucking move on. Now for questionable things we didn't write full paragraphs on. Woo! And I will forewarn you, there are a lot of sales stuff in here. A lot of revenue. Oh, my favorite. I can't wait for this Captain Obvious. <laughs> Nexon's game. revenue grew by 20% in 2023. Its record-breaking revenue was $2.8 billion. That's pretty good. That is. 
for all these layoffs, a lot of record uh, breaking uh, revenue years. Sega Sammy's net sales for the last nine months was $2.3 billion, up 29% over last year. Sega Sammy? Yeah. Sega Sammy. Should I know what that is? Sega. Yeah, no, the second part. Yeah. I wasn't we, the every part. week do we do the Sega Sammy thing. And you're like, Sega Sammy, what the fuck is that? I'm gonna do it every week. I'm gonna do it every week. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in my coffin going. <laughs> Somebody say Sega Sammy. <laughs> Sega Sammy attributed its boost in overall sales for our, and profit to its uh pa- patchy slot and pachinko. Pa- but Pat Patchy Sly, yeah, Patchy Sly and Pachinko machines of business. I can talk. From software's parent company, Katakawa Corporation has bought Octopath Traveler developer Acquire for an undisclosed sum. Okay. I mean, that one's interesting only to see. It it just doesn't fit the mold. Yeah, so what's I'm it very mean? curious what that turns into. What's it mean? Do they make like a hard octopath trap <laughs> like a like a roguelike dark descent style it was your typical uh you know marketing pr statement that was basically like we buy good shit we buy we buy we, <laughs> that was basically it you know the you statement know what, of like you know if there if, if a company came out and i'm pretty sure i praised embrace it for this before they let half of their fucking studios go <laughs> they're just like we like thing we buy <laughs> that's basically what it said <laughs> It was like, they make good shit. We like it. We buy them. Uh, Persona 3 Reload is the fastest selling Atlas game ever. It sold over 1 million copies in the first week. That's surprising to me. Paradox Interactive's full year revenue grew by 34% to $248 million. Inflection's Nightingale Early Access has been moved up Two days to February twentieth. Nightingale. Oh, we, I, we once again we do this every time too. Well, it was the it was the inflections part that. Yeah. I didn't. I never will remember the name of that studio. Yeah, I, I don't know. Same. I'm more. I'm. I'm just kind of like kind of. I'm still like. I'm gonna watch it. Like, what are they? What are they doing over there? Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's ex-Bioware devs. You don't know what you're gonna get. I dig. Yeah. <laughs> when did you when did you work at Bioware? No, give me the fucking years. Tell me the years. A group of more than eighty IGN employees are headed for unionization. As the newly formed IGN Creators Guild announced that more than eighty seven percent of the eligible members of that group had signed union authorization cards. That's I'm proud of you guys, but I don't think that's gonna work out well for you. I mean power to you i mean for sure i just i can't imagine like it's hard for me to imagine whoever owns ign at this point don't know being i think they'd rather instead of figure it out and like figure out a way to keep ign profitable they'll just be like, screw this yeah i don't know what their deal is now i don't know either like i don't I'm sure I guess they still do decent, but like, and not that these are the same thing at all. But I think Rooster Teeth's dying this year, if not next. Yeah, it's just kind of like a like go full animation house, and that'll be it. That'll be mm-hmm. the end. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, we'll see. They turned off their uh, Twitter. I think interesting. Like made a post the the bio on it says uh like this is an inactive account and it's like hmm interesting letting go some marketing people maybe or just uh, who knows not participating on the platform or whatever they're like oh follow us on like ig or whatever and it's like okay what? maybe everyone's that that so-called uh I don't know what you uh, second coming of Twitter. I guess the blue skies is open now, so I'm wondering if the people are going to start flocking to that. <clears throat> blue skies, there it is, with the butterfly or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah, butterfly. You're my butterfly. 
Sugar, sugar baby. Uh, baby. Yeah, I can't remember how it goes. Come, come, my lady. You want butterfly sugar? Um, CVC Capital Partners has purchased. So I signed up for Blue Skies. Oh, okay. But there was way too many like tutorial screens where it was like, check this out, check this out, check this out. And I was there just were, like, there were quite a few. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. No, <laughs> so I, I signed up. I made the account so I can get my name basically. Yeah. Sure. And then I was just like, all right, I'm not looking at you again because <laughs> you just tried to throw too much information at me too quickly. <laughs> too much, too much, too much. <laughs> CVC Capital Partners has purchased game studio Jagex. Jagex is the maker of RuneScape. Tencent has dramatically increased its stake in Wang Yang Sheng Tang, the Beijing based developer behind action RPG series Swords of Legends. <laughs> the way your head moved, I was like, he's fucking me. Like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> no, I'm just like, hell yeah, he got the names this time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> ten cents total stake in Wang Young now amounts to more than ninety four percent. So they basically own it. Yeah, <laughs> it's theirs. What are, what are you doing with that last five percent? Waiting. <laughs> Silent Hill: The Short Message has passed one million downloads. Did you do anything with that? Silent Hill: The Short Message. No. Okay. I, I don't. I, I'm not a, really a horror gamer. Yeah, yeah. I figured I didn't. I, it Alan was free, about as so, far is about yeah. as close as I get to that. It was um, free, so I wasn't sure if you were gonna like. Yeah, partake. I mean that's free, but Resident Evil Two Remake is in Game Pass right now, and I've still stopped myself from playing that. As pretty yeah. as that game is, it sounds like, like it was a a broke ass version of PT, which basically like the dollar everything. store version or the wish. The wish was it? Is that the joke? I mean, both were wish app. Yeah, yeah, wish app, dollar store. It's version. like the wish app version of great PT. value version. Yeah. The we have PT at home version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> PT at home. <laughs> Nintendo's full year profits have risen to $2.7 billion despite slow Switch sales. That's a 2% increase over the previous year. In his latest Hideo Tube video, Kojima provided a surprisingly raw answer for his return to stealth game. A stealth game. Specifically an espionage. During the pandemic, Kojima became sick to the point of needing surgery and making out a will. At a certain point, he thought his ability to make games may be over, which ultimately made him reassess his priorities. He was like, I need to make another espionage game because I might die. It was such a wild concept. It's Kojima, you know? What? <laughs> He yeah, probably was on the verge of death, had some fucking weird ass psychedelic fucking. But because it's Kojima, it could have been anything. Could have been. You need to make another a new, another espionage one. Could have also been I'm going to make a train simulator, and I would have been like Kojima. <laughs> yeah, Kojima. Yep. Could you make a train simulator? That'd be fucking wild. Yeah, imagine that'd be a made, wild train simulator. You imagine if you made Railroad Tycoon Four, you'd lose your fucking mind. I don't, I, everyone would lose that. You'd lose your mind playing it because you wouldn't. I don't even know. I can't even fathom what would happen. There'd be a villain called the Conductor. I'm just gonna rip an entire fucking inside games, but <laughs> or inside uh, games. Ne- true, true. <laughs> <laughs> Nexus Mods has crossed 10 billion downloads. I think there's a certain company starting with a B that would like some money. Yeah, they really probably would. Homeworld 3 is delayed once again and will now launch on May 13th. I fucking forgot they were making a third of those. Helldivers 2's concurrent Steam player record is PlayStation Studios' highest yet. The game's peak concurrent player count is currently 81,800. Not terrible. No. For what it is. Yeah. For a PlayStation title that literally fully changed how the game functioned from the first one. Yeah. The previously released Netflix sequel to Ubisoft's Valiant Hearts, called Valiant Hearts Coming Home, is set to be released for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Did you ever play the first one? I did not. I own it, though. I think almost everybody owns it. I think it's one of those ones where it's just like, 
It was free I, I at some point. They, they probably they must have. I I'm pretty sure I bought it. Oh, okay. And then I never played it because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, Square Enix is planning a major internal restructure of its game development system, as reported by Bloomberg Japan. The goal is to improve the game quality as well as the profit margins of Square Enix titles. And that's it. That one is interesting because Square Enix is like really big on using gener- uh, generative AI. So I wonder if that's going to factor in there. Generate this AI. Generate this dick. <laughs> Generate these nuts. Whatever. Generate. Uh, anyway, it's been it's been seven days. What you what you been doing? Nothing. Nothing at oh, all. Yeah. What have I been doing? Um, you know the usual: consuming content, um, watching Masters of the Air, um, mm-hmm. uh, watching anime. I uh. Went to a fucking one of that massive uh, thrift store, not thrift store, antique store. I don't know. One of those places, you know, where they, they have old shit there. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why. It was the way of like the way your head was, the glasses, everything, and, the, and like the slight squint on your face as you kind of just shake your hand. I'm just like, you added 20 years to yourself as you're telling me that they have shit there, the old shit there, and I just don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what to do about it. That's how I feel right now. Um, it's like four or five stories of just like... It's probably thrift, technically, because I believe antique would actually be technically... Antique is like thrifting, but pinky out. It kind of is that a little bit. This I think it's called Syracuse Antique uh, Corner or something like that. Because those are usually like your... What would almost be trashy to have around. Glitzy goldy diamondy whatever i don't know they don't sure much... you might find like an old antique golf club that's worth stupid amounts of money and it's just a stick of wood but like yeah i guess thrift would probably be like the red maybe maybe it's closer to being thrift being like the redneck for the trash the, the white trash version of antique shops i don't know i, I think they're just two different things this one's four I've... or five stories is fucking massive it's huge it's fucking huge and um and this is in syracuse yeah where uh it's like a it's a really it's like right next to the fucking uh destiny i'm surprised they didn't just buy three floors in destiny and just say fuck it here it is i mean they might as well so we went through that and i found some books i saw i found um so my grandfather used to have this times uh times book collection it was called it's called the epic of flight and it's like 20 something books and it's like basically the. You just got like a flight thing going on. At the moment, yeah. Well, my, my grandfather did because he was in the Air Force. Well, so that like, makes sense. Okay, yeah. So he had this book, this. And I remember like I loved them as a kid because, you know, they were like perfect combination of like pictures, diagrams, text. Yeah, yeah. Close to like an encyclopedia almost. Yeah, of, basically. Of, it's of it's essentially a history of flight. And. Did, um, now, do the spines have like a sweet design? Yes. On them? Well, they were they were very like old. So like. Old, not old, but old school. Like all the covers were like a navy blue, right? And then they had the title in nice silver font running down the spines. And once you lined them all up, you know they just they just looked like they belonged. Like yeah, I just wasn't sure if they like if you lined them all up in the right order that they were supposed to be. If there was just like a fighter jet on the side. Oh uh, no, that would be cool though. So I found I was just like bumming around. I was actually looking for a specific book, and um. So I was like looking at, I went through every floor looking at all the books essentially. And I, I came across this, like six of them of this from that series. I was like, what the fuck? And we, when my grandfather passed away, we all, he had so many books. We don't, I'm pretty sure my mom, um, I don't know if she donated him to a library or a college or something like that. Cause they, she had, he had a lot of like technical books as well. And, uh, yeah, so I found these six books, and I, they were like two dollars and fifty cents a piece. I was like, "Fuck, buying these." Um, yeah, so that was that was. Uh, so I got six out of twenty. Six out of like twenty three of them, and I looked online when I found them. I was like, "Can I just buy the whole set?" And I went on, and like people are selling the whole set on eBay, and I'm like, <clears throat> and 
they're cheap enough. I was like, oh, I, maybe I'll go that route, but I'm gonna buy these ones too. And well, they also more, had more entertaining to find them. Yeah, that and the weird thing about it is that he was a prolific mo- like model builder. Oh yes, yeah, so this, this is where we share our yeah uh, background from. And on one of the backs of the books is white model paint on the cover, and I'm okay, like, so now you just ha- now you have to have this moment where yeah, you know, I'm like. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking way. There's no way. So I was like, ah, I should buy these, like, just in case. So I bought them, and that was that. I mean, um, someday you'll be able to ask him. Yeah. yeah. Did so you happen I'll to ring put, him up? And be did like, you happen to put a book with white model paint directly in front of me when I was shopping in that store that one time? Because <laughs> fuck you, that's the coolest shit I've had in a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw it, and I was like, "There's no way." You motherfucker, you made me spend six bucks. How dare you? <laughs> or 12 bucks or whatever game to. <laughs> uh, no, that's it. I don't care anything else going on, though. Was I'd there anything to... else that was like cool there that you do? Like, you're like, I, 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 not even from like a price that you can't justify, but you're like, what am I really going to do with it? They had, um, let me think here. Because I mean, out of five stories, I feel like there's got to be something there that would have been like. There's just a lot of shit. I mean, there was a lot of like old stuff. There was a lot of nostalgia stuff because like we're getting to that age now to where like don't say this, don't say that phrase. We're, we're getting, getting to that age now. We're getting and then to followed that age. up with the saddest thing I'm about to hear. No, here. it's it's one of those things where we're getting to that age that like all of the like shit that we saw and we like had when we mm. were little is now like in these fucking places. True. Yeah. So like there was like all these like side tables and like coffee mugs and like stuff that I was just like we had all this shit in my grandparents' house or whoever's house like you know when there was a I don't know why but there was a lot of Asian art whether it was Japanese or Chinese or whatever. A lot of Asian restaurants go out of business every year. There was a metric shit ton of playboy magazines now like if you spent 12 dollars on those it was kind of ridiculous <laughs> how many there was um well, so i know the thing about playboy is <laughs> the first joke out of my mouth is gonna be boobs <laughs> <laughs> but like the thing about uh like people that collect them or whatever is like it it's in the same vintage of like um some sports illustrated stuff and whatever where it's mm. like after you reach like past 100 like uh n- number 100 or whatever you're then looking for ones that had like momentous things in it type of thing yeah and and then you're like, well, otherwise it doesn't matter. And if it's it's if it's not like preserved perfectly, who really gives a shit? Yeah. Um. But I can only imagine like how many milk crates you could walk out with just full of Playboys. It was it was. Uh... And what do you do with it? You know what I mean? Like, like what do you do? Like right now in in the age we're at. Yeah, I don't know. If you go open up somebody's closet and you just see ten milk crates full of Playboys, they probably end up in a dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Like what do, what do we do? We just go. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Anybody want to see what boobs were like back then? Here yeah. we go. Flip through these. There Here's, was I was yeah, we're almost to the point where it'd be like, here you go, son, take a look. Become a man. <laughs> <laughs> you have that There's, moment. <laughs> there was a like a high the amount of um I there was like a lot of I don't know how to how to describe it. Not like sexual stuff, but like a lot of the art and like they had, there's they had a lot of art. They had a like a lot of like small sculptures and stuff for like decorative things. A lot of gnomes, fucking. <laughs> a lot of it was because <laughs> that was like bought, I would have bought naked that and put it in the lawn. naked bodies or or whatever. There was a lot of like we came across this like Asian or this like uh what the hell was it um Age of Aquarius calendar thing. There was all these like these like people like banging. It was just like a lot of like weird it stuff. Part of me wonders if that's just like left over from like love phase, you know, ooh, cultural love, man. Yeah. Just like that's what it seemed like. That's it's the just stuff like that they can't get rid of because everybody now is just kind of like, oh man, it's tacky. It's yeah. not like it's not like fun, like buying a bunch of records or even buying a bunch of Playboys. Yeah. I can. Get that was away the other, with, there was but. a there was a shit ton of records there. There's a 
there's a guy at work who I know is like big into music and has a record collection and does a lot of the record stuff. And I'm going to be like, you need to go to this place because there's like a fuck ton of records there. But there, that's kind of the, if you're into like old records, old books, all that stuff, like there's a lot of that there. Um, there's a lot of like, they do have a lot of like art stuff there. That's kind of interesting. Postcards, a lot of just the old memorabilia, old trains. Um, there was not really any old trains that that's I noticed. That I they, now you mention it, that is interesting. That is interesting. A lot of I, old Hess trucks. Because I, 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 I have a sneaking suspicion about the old train thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's getting hoarded. Oh yeah. I think it's getting hoarded and held on to, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to make a resurgence of sorts. Oh yeah, I agree. Not I think, like. I think when we like, our train show is going to come back. I think when we hit retirement age, it's going to be fucking huge. Yeah, I don't know necessarily that like a train show is going to come back, mm-hmm. but I think models like that mm-hmm. are going to go off again. Oh yeah, I I hundred percent think that's going to be the case. Like I, I pick here's walk with me, Matt. Down the down the the thought process of my mm-hmm. brain. We've both seen big rooms with trains. Yeah. The fucking sentence is that. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that. We've seen big rooms with trains. Uh, There's people listening be like, is that code for something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, trains. Uh, but not just like the big displays, but like even uh, like large garage, like storage rooms or whatever that have mm-hmm. the displays. Like you had to crawl under the table to get up in the middle of it. You could control everything. Think about if somebody got advanced. So advanced. Train yards and Warhammer on the same table. Okay. Using trains to deliver troops and making becoming a tactical type thing. So we get a warehouse. <laughs> and we create two two countries <laughs> that their main source of logistics is trains. Yeah. It's just two 40 foot by 40 foot square tables on each side of the warehouse. And in between are just DMZ to drop off areas of troops. <laughs> Artillery is in like the middle of both of these things, just launching, and there's mm-hmm. mountains and all the whole thing. Essentially building out of like Japan's mountain bunkers firing and. <laughs> Uh, I th- I feel like you're I feel on like, something. I feel like the the train thing could change a lot of tabletop gaming if you were ever able to set up like something that big. Yeah, the space would be the. I could see that being like an internet thing, like a YouTube thing. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, even if it was just like you and I, we would never do this because we don't have the the ambition, like or the, the willpower. The, I think we have both of those things. I think we don't have the time. Well, yeah. Um. But if we set if we if we if we were just always hanging out, we're like, I don't know, we want to do this. We kind of all right, let's go get two forty foot tables. Fuck it, who give a shit. And we go just go do this. Then we set it up, and it's like, all right, every Friday we're gonna battle two different ways, and we have all these cam- all these GoPros set up to film it all, edit it, and have it up by next Friday. Yeah. And then it's just like every week we're gonna do this, and we're just gonna see who likes the ridiculousness of it all. It's be like the fucking Hot Wheels car racing, but like remaking Sniper Elite, but using. <laughs> Model trains, <laughs> model trains of Warhammers. Because I mean, Warhammer, you have snipers, you can have melee, you can have range, you know, you can have all that stuff. Start like putting custom trains together, so you can just pop the shells off and put new shells on mm-hmm. that are all customed mm-hmm. up like a like a Warhammer, or like Gothic style train. Brilliant. All I'm saying is, I got ideas. Yeah, execution terrible. Idea, man. Great. Well, you just spoke into it existence, so it's fine. True. In six months, we will see the beginning of this, and I will hate my life that I waited this long. <laughs> Every time. So what have you been up to? Well, about the same as usual. Playing WoW, playing Mirage, playing uh, Like a Dragon, doing a dating sim in Like a Dragon. Classic. It was weird, man. How's Mirage treating you? Um... Goodish. Uh, once once you get a little bit more skill 
skill points and you understand that they really want you to go back to hide in a bush, wait for the path to come by, kill them, put them in the bush, go kill this. Like, hey, don't get into combat. Spend 10 minutes in this small area. Yeah. Then then you end up better. I don't like being in the city. Not from like a... The city's pretty and like it's fun to run around in and everything else. But getting in combat in the city... Like you, there's some things that you have to get in combat for in the city. And if you don't want to take on 10 people at once, which can be cumbersome with the combat style, mm. you're like, I'm just going to run away. As you're running, you're gaining people because you have to run past guards that are every, and the notoriety system kicks on and it's like. So it really punishes you. Yeah. It gets to the point where it's like, I've, okay, cool. I ran away and I dumped into like one of the, you know, blend things where you, you end up in the like tents or something to hide, hay bale, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, I hide. They go away. My notoriety sticks until I go clear it. So either I find a guy to talk to to pay him off, I go tear down posters around town, and then it's lowered. Well, guess what? In order to tear down posters, I have to walk around town while being notori- like notorious. Yeah. At least in Red Dead, when I got notorious in a town, I could go to another town and pay it off. Yeah. This is just like, fuck you. We all know who you are in this town where there's no communication amongst a 400 mile <laughs> we're, radius. We're in the middle. Every ages. one of us knows. Who <clears throat> you. And somehow we've created hundreds of posters of your face in seconds. <laughs> if you stab somebody, Frank on the other side of town puts one up. He just fucking sneezes. He's like, oh, that motherfucker. And then sticks a poster up. Yeah. They know. But yeah, so it's, uh, it's been it's been uh, things. I got Hell Divers installed, so I'll probably give that a shot. See how that goes. Nice, nice. I didn't read into it, but I but I, I guess the current reviews are mixed. I think that's been a lot due to the patch they had to put out of like stability stuff and whatever. Yeah, I did. I did see that there was. But I've seen stuff. a lot of clips that have just been hysterical. Okay, that are like pure Hell Divers of. I think the guy kills a giant bug and it explodes, and then his leg, the bug's leg, lands on him and kills him. And he's just laughing the entire time. And it's just like, yep, of course. Of course that would happen. And it's like, yep, hell divers. Maybe we'll have to get the gang together for that one. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in seven days. Toodaloo. Bye-bye.